Hi, good morning, everybody. Are we ready for cheese scones? Fantastic. I can see lots of you here. I'm just going to wait a minute because I know some of you are new and you're not quite sure how to log on. So if you can see me and you can see us and you can see the board with the ingredients, you are in the right place. Fantastic. So I'm going to do some shout outs to you in a minute. So if you're new or you're old, let me know where you are, how old you are. It'd be lovely to give you a hello. So put that in the comments. You can give me some thumbs up and some love and a little wave. That's always lovely to see. Um, and I'm just going to briefly introduce myself to those that don't know me. We've had a lot of new joiners this week and just briefly recap what you need to do to join the club. So kids, if you're listening, make sure you tell your grown ups. So I'm Nicole, um, this is the Kids Kitchen. I run a, an amazing award-winning kids cooking school and this is Kids Cook Club, online cooking classes wherever you are in the world. So I've, we've had actually, I had an email this morning from somebody in Australia, so she's not cooking with us live this morning, but it's fantastic. So the first thing I want you to do is please like and share this page, follow this page so you get alerts. Share it with your friends wherever they are in the world because everything is on replay here if you can't come live and everything's also on replay on the YouTube channel, so do subscribe to that. So if you're watching on replay, hello as well. Um, you can put your comments and I will give you a shout out later. So two things that you need to do if you wanna join us. Every week we're cooking twice a week, two classes, Wednesday afternoon at 2.30 and Saturday morning at 10. Two separate recipes, and if you go to the website, which is thekidskitchen.net, there's a little button that says subscribe here to the mailing list. And when you do that by return, you'll immediately get confirmation and then another email with that week's recipes. The recipes then get out every Saturday. So if you're not getting a recipe, as, uh, an email as soon as you subscribe or every Saturday, check your junk because it's probably gone in there. So make sure you like my email and that you don't put me in the spam filter. Um, and if you don't have it, let me know. But I always do a little video covering off what we're cooking this week. So you can see here are the ingredients. So if you don't have them right in front of you, please take a note. But you will basically get two recipes that look like this on the download that you can just click. And be patient, it takes a bit of a while to download, okay? And then you just need to come here and like and follow the page. And I just turn up live. There's no restricted access or anything. It should be super, super simple for you to come and join us. Um, and as I said, everything is also on replay. So um, this morning, I'm just going to cover off some of the stuff you're going to need, the kit and the ingredients. And then while you get all of that assembled, I will go and do my shout outs and see who's joining me this morning. And I have to tell you, this is what we're making this morning. My kitchen smells unbelievable. So this is a little one I made earlier, a bit blue Peter. So these are my cheese scones. And oh, the smell of fresh cheese scones is something else. It really is. So I've been very restrained and not eaten them this morning, but we might have them. So in about an hour, you are going to have some amazing cheese scones for lunch or for brunch, whatever you want. So what you're going to need is 250 grams of self-raising flour. That's the blue bag. If you've got plain, don't worry. You just need a bit more baking powder. If you're gluten-free, use your gluten-free one. This is baking powder, or if you've got bicarb, that's also fine. And don't worry if you've got questions about ingredients. I'll come to those in a minute. I just want to run through everything so you've got everything in front of you. So, chefs, you can check. You're going to need um, 50 grams of butter cut into cubes. So I would take this from the fridge so it's quite hard. That really helps. Those are all of our – oh, and some cheddar cheese. So, again, if you've got, I've got cheddar, but if you've got red Leicester or anything hard, parmesan, whatever you want. If you've got a crumbly cheese like Stilton and you want to put that in, that is also fine, okay? And then I've also got some, um, an egg, which you can see hiding in there. So one egg, if you're using an egg replacer, I would probably use the packet egg replacer rather than chia or flat. We'll just add in a bit more liquid if it's a bit stiff, okay? So you can ask about that. Um, I'm gonna put a bit of flavoring in mine. So I've got some mustard. You might want some Marmite or something else. And if you're completely doing it vegan and you're not having any cheese at all, if you haven't got the vegan cheese, you might wanna put in some vegan pesto or tapenade or sun-dried tomato paste, okay? And then you're going to need a bit of yogurt. So I've got some Greek yogurt here and some milk. If you don't have any yogurt, do not panic. You can just use the milk with a little splash of lemon juice, and I'm going to cover that off as well. So I'm just going to go and give you some shout-outs while you get all of that ready. And the other kit, I'm sorry that you, work, you can't see, is you need a jug, you'll need a grater, you'll need some cutters. I like to use the small one rather than the big one. Um, and they make that kind of size, and then you can see them there, end on end. If you don't have a cutter, just the edge of a, a glass like this will be absolutely fine. Um, and a baking tray, obviously, to put it in the oven, and I've got a mixing bowl behind it, and that's really what you need. So 
So let me give you guys a shout out. So, hi Alexandra, she's in Northumberland, and hi Ruben. Hi Rachel, you're going to join, but oh dear, face injury and a trip to A&E. Oh, I wish you better, but come back and make some cheese scones. They always make you feel better, okay? It's all on replay, so you can come back. Um, hi from Imogen, fantastic, we are going to get started. We are going to start, don't worry, you're not rushing me. Hi Giselle, hi Isabel and Ellie, and you haven't got Greek yogurt, Frank Fresh is perfect, Daisy. First time, hi Rebecca, hi Liza, hi Karen, it's your second time, fantastic. Hi Josie from Manchester, hi Sophia and Emily, and oh I've got celiac gluten-free, that's fine, just use the gluten-free flour, you might want to feel with a bit of texture and add a bit more in, okay? Um, who have I missed? Happy 10th birthday Adele and Joseph, you're cooking today, fantastic, that's lovely, I love that. You're having a lazy line and you can do it later. That is perfect, Ashley. Absolutely fine, okay? So you can watch this and then you'll know what to do. Hi, Margarita. Um, who else have I missed? Eliza. Um, can you make plain scones? Yes, you can. Maybe put some flavoring in, so like some pesto or something if you want. They'll be quite plain. These are supposed to be a savory scone, so they won't be exactly like the ones that you would have um, for tea because they haven't got any sugar in, okay? So they'll be a bit bland, so that's why they need a bit of flavor. Um, can I hear you? I can, yes. Is there an alternative for Greek yogurt? Yeah, I've covered that off, just some milk and some lemon juice, okay? And if you're vegan, obviously just the dairy-free alternatives. Hi, Leo, Sasha and Pippa, first time cooking. Hello, lovely to have you. Hi, Rosa, you're back again, Claire. Oh, Georgia, okay, fantastic. And I've got Louis here, Deville, in your nine, fantastic. Bradley, brilliant, brilliant. Lovely to see lots of new faces and old faces, okay? Good. Good, good, good. Who else am I missing here? It's a bit of a time delay on my scroll, so I'm not ignoring you. That's why I'm just going back on another screen here. I've got Etta and Ali, and I've got Violet, and I've got Yasmin and Mummy, fantastic, and Emily and George. Look, I know, cheese scones are the best. They're one of my favourites. Jaden, hi to Lula and Karen and Eliza. Right, so I'm going to come back while we do a bit of cooking, and I'm going to get you started. So I'm going to take that out of the way. And first things first, you should all be like me, so hair tied up, apron on, and hopefully you guys have all washed your hands. So if you haven't, go and nip off and do that. And then you want to put your oven on. So your oven needs to be on 190 degrees or 170 fan, okay? So go and pop your ovens on, get your grown-up helpers to do that. And then what I want you to start with is I want you, we're going to get everything um, ready so we can make our scones. So I want you to start with your grating your cheese, okay? So I'm gonna put these, so actually those ones can go there, can't we? So when we grate, I've got a flat grater, so it sits flat rather than one of those that's up, and I think these are much easier, okay? But when you cut your block of cheese, I don't wanna have your fingers right close, I want it up here. So I want you to hold your cheese like this and just grate all of the cheese. And I've been a bit more generous, you'll notice I've said to you about 100 grams of cheese and a bit more for sprinkling. So if you are a cheese monster, and I'm thinking some of you do. Oh, hi, Des. I've got my friend Des from Cape Town. It's lovely. Thank you for joining me. Um, hi, Barbara, Ruby, and Ava. Can you put in any sauce? Yeah, if you want to flavor it, what you were thinking of putting in, I just put a bit of mustard in for seasoning, but like I said, Marmite's good, or, you know, pesto. Just in case that kind of thing. Hi, Daniel, Jasmine, fantastic. It's your first time. And your second time, Camille, that's lovely. And Evelyn is super excited. Good. Oliver and Florence, you are up early prepping. Love it. So I know some of you that are getting really good probably think, get a move on. But for some of us that have not got, have just got out of bed, where it's our first time, it's just going to take a bit of time till they get with the program, okay? Hi, Riley. And you can use natural yogurt, absolutely any yogurt. I just happen to have Greek yogurt, because it's what I normally have in the fridge, okay? So you just want to grate all of your cheese. So remember, your hands are on top, so we're not grating any fingers. And I'm just going to keep going this, and it's all grated, and when I'm doing that, I will give you a shout out. Is it okay if I've repeated you? I'm sorry, Mariana, Patty and Theodora, you're impressed with my grater. It's just an Ikea grater, but I tell you why I love these, because you're less likely to grate your fingers this way, little chefs and big chefs. Um, what happens is when you hold your grater, so I just put the rubbish in there, and I'll show you what I mean. If your grater was like that, and you had your fingers out, you're more likely to get that little bit on your knuckles to grate it. Could you do a cupcake tin instead of cutters? Yeah, you could, but I'm going to show you can do it by hand. If you don't have cutters, do not worry about it. Um, but whatever you want to do, that's fine. Oh, your family ate the cookies so fast you had to make another batch, Maria. That is the best sign. That's what happens. When I don't get any photos, I think, hmm, either they were really bad or they were super good and everybody ate them so quick they didn't have time to take a photo, which I think is what happened last week, wasn't it? Tracy, you all prepped. Fantastic. Brilliant. 
Hi, how are you doing? You're cooking with me. That is lovely. And Frankie, it's your first time. Temperature for the oven, Durgesh, is 170 degrees fan or 190 regular. Okay. Perfect. Now, right, so I've just got my cheese grated. So just put your cheese to one side. That's all you need to do. You take the lid. So if you've got it like mine, you can just take the lid off and pop it. And there we go. So we'll see. Violet, first time, that's lovely. You'd like to add some mixed herbs. Um, I would add them in the flour, so not just yet. You'd add maybe a teaspoon or something like that, and we'll stir them in, and you'll see, because you, they'll be nice and green. You'll be able to see how colourful they are. And then if you can't see so many and you want them a bit more flavourful, you'd add a bit more in, okay? Perfect. So, so the way this goes, guys, as we're going, is if I'm going a bit fast for you, just put a little sad face. But don't worry, I work a bit faster, and I'm just showing you what to do and then we'll wait for everybody to catch up. Okay, hi James and Thomas, that's lovely. It's so great to see so many of you who've been cooking with me the whole time. I love it, I love it, love it, love it. Um, hi Izzy and Sophie, and anybody that this is your first time or your second time and you've not done all the recipes, because this is week four, so we're like on eight classes now, go back into the replays. Um, on the Facebook page on the left, there's a little tab and it says videos, and all of the old videos are there. They're also on the YouTube channel, because I know some of you prefer watching on YouTube, so you can blow me up big on your TV screen, so go and subscribe to the channel there as well. Okay. Um, Sarah, the oven gas mark is um, mm, not so good on gas marks. I'm guessing about four, um, but double check. It's 170 fan for regular and 190, okay? Hi, Emily and Molly, 190. Yeah, we got that. Now. So what I want you to do is in your jug, and if you haven't got a jug, don't worry, a little bowl is fine. I've got an egg. So what we want to do is we want to use our egg first. And I'm going to show you, we've been practicing eggs, so everything that we do when we cook is really good to practice techniques. So I'm going to tap, tap, tap on the middle until you hear it. And then you can see a nice big kind of crack sort of there. And I'm going to hold it up. We're going to, we don't need to do this, but this is good practice for those of you that I've seen practicing it this week. I'm going to put our thumb in. We're going to lift the top off like a hat. I'm gonna go a bit. Yeah, you're grating your cheese. That's okay, that, that, that's fine. Don't worry. You can just hear me. I'm gonna wait in a minute so I can come back and catch up with all your comments. So I've got a little hat and I've got my egg in here. And you can see some of my whites dropped in. And I'm just gonna practice now. So we're gonna use both bits of the egg today, the yolk and the white. And I'm just gonna pour one to the other. And it's quite a fun thing. And that's how we would separate an egg. And we did that the other day for our chocolate mousse. So. Can I use the amount? Yeah, absolutely. So that was 100 grams of cheese and just one egg. That's all we've done at the moment. That's fine. Okay, you've got to sign back in. So I know most of you have normally got um, a recipe to one side, but absolutely, I will go through that. That's perfect. Hi, Esme, and it's your first time. Lovely. So if you've just started, it's 100 grams of cheese that we've just grated in here, okay? And then I've just been practicing separating my egg, which you can do, and you just want to put an egg in your jug or your little bowl, whatever you're doing. Hi, Phoebe and Arnie. The Teddy Avocado. Have you got a Teddy called Avocado? That's very fun. Very fun. I like that. If you have to send me a photo of Teddy, I'd like to see what Teddy the Avocado looks like. Maybe he's a green Teddy. So, who have I missed here? You've got the recipes for two, three, and four. You've missed week one. Just DM me, okay? I can't, for some reason, because this is a page and not a group, um, I can't seem to attach stuff to the threads. So, if you have any individual questions, just send me a direct message, okay? And then I will sort it out. Do not worry. Perfect. So everybody's good, I think. So if you're good and we're all good, you can keep sending me those thumbs up and those love hearts because I love seeing those. If it's a bit too fast, just pop a little sad face and then I will slow down. Temperature for the oven, just one more time, is 190 or 170 fan. Hi, Frankie. It's your first time too. How much butter? So butter is 50 grams. I'm going to come on to that. We haven't started yet, okay? So, and if you're watching this on replay, don't worry, it's fine. Hi, Izzy and James. Perfect. And thank you for those of you that are helping out and writing things in the, th in the thread. I love that. Okay. So we're using our wet things. So we've got our egg in here. And now we're going to go for our yogurt and our meal. Hi, James and Thomas. I have said hello. And what else have I got here? Georgina, you're cooking dairy free. That is perfect. And hi, jo James, again with his sister. That is lovely. Now, those of you that asked, I'm just going to show you a little demo. So don't worry about doing this. If you don't have yogurt, this is what you do. And we've done this before when we've done our soda bread. So if we pour a bit of milk into a glass or whatever little bowl that you're going to do, and I'll just show you this, and I put a little splash of lemon juice. It doesn't have to be fresh. I always recommend having something like this in the fridge. I'm going to be quite generous with my lemon juice just so you can see it quite quickly. Did I say separate the egg? You don't need to, Lizette. It's just I like to teach you skills as we cook. 
So that way, when we're separating the egg, you can practice. But it doesn't matter if you pop it. We're going to mix it up. So just let the kids have a bit of fun. OK, so I keep on freezing. Is it your it probably is your Wi-Fi, Maria? I'm sorry about that. But you can always come back to this later. Don't worry. Hopefully you've got the audio. So as I'm just stirring this, this is just you don't need to do this. This is just milk and lemon juice. And you can see if I tip this or if I show you my spoon here, it's starting to kind of get lumpy. Can you see that on the side of the glass there? And that's what happens. We're curdling the milk. We're souring it, really. So those of you that don't have any yogurt, this is what you want to do. So where you've got the milk, you've got three tablespoons. Put your three tablespoons in a separate little glass or somewhere else. Just put a splash of lemon juice in and just leave it for a minute until it gets, can you see like that, a bit bitty? And it looks like it's not very yummy, but that's what you want, okay? We want something sour that's going to help the sponge really rise, okay? I love to cook too, Abby. Well done. So that's only for you guys if you don't have any yogurt. For those of you that do have yogurt, what you want to do is you're going to take two tablespoons. So I've got a massive pot, haven't I? Look how big this pot of yogurt is. So you're going to take two spoons. Um, you are not deaf as opposed, Maria. You're absolutely fine. So how much yogurt? You need two tablespoons. So we're just doing that. You're a step ahead of me. So two tablespoons are going in. One and two. This is if you have yogurt, okay? You can't get into the live stream. That's strange, Sarah. If you can see me here and I can see your comment in the live stream, that's really weird. Maybe you've got a Wi-Fi problem, but don't worry because you will be able to come back later and it will be on replay and it will be like in hardly any time. So go and watch one of the other videos, okay? Or maybe try and um, see if you can do it on your phone or something else. So if you've added all the liquid to it, yes, you can. I just wanted to show you how it sours really quickly. So I've got two tablespoons of yogurt in here, and then I'm going to add my three tablespoons of milk. So those of you that don't have the yogurt, remember you're just going to have that one, two, and we'll count three. Perfect. Okay. Hello, Fran. I'm loving this. Kate and Theo, fantastic. And I'm just going to wash my fingers. I've got a dirty finger. So I'm just going to have a brief recap. So in my little jug or your little bowl as well, we've got all our wet things, all our liquids. So we've got an egg or an egg replacer if you're using that. We've got some yogurt. So two tablespoons of yogurt and three of milk. Or if you haven't got um, yogurt, you're just going to put the same in five tablespoons of milk with some um, lemon juice. OK, is that all right? Is everybody with us? And I'm going to use some flavoring. So I'm going to use some mustard. Oh, gosh, if anybody's got a blocked nose and you've got mustard, give it a bit of a sniff. Whew, really clears your nose out, doesn't it? Um, do I put milk in the egg? Yeah, the milk and the yogurt and the egg are all together. So I'm just going to pop in a little teaspoon of mustard. And for those of you that were doing it plain or didn't want to use cheese, this is where you might put in um, some Marmite or something else. It's just a little flavor. It doesn't make it really strong. It's a really great way of doing um, trying new things. OK, and then all you're going to do is just mix up all your wet things together. And you'll see it will go the lovely yellow color. So I've got my egg yolk in there. You can use a fork if you want to. Where can you find the ingredients for next time? So what you need to do, guys, if you're just joining now, is you need to sign up at thekidskitchen.net. When you're on the mailing list, you will get emailed the recipes. Okay? I do cover it off at the start of each class, but you do need to be on the list so you can get it every week. And then you just like and follow the page here and come along. And I want you guys, when you're doing this, to please share it with friends because it's lovely when we have people join, but it's so much easier for them when they um, have signed up before and then they know what's going on. And I'm going to do something special tomorrow when we get to 9,000. So share, share, share. Right. Yeah, you will. Absolutely. You will know what you're doing. So every Saturday, anybody on the mailing list gets a newsletter telling you what you're going to do the next week and then heads up for the week after that. So you kind of know two weeks out. But you do need to get the stuff. If you are not getting an email on Saturday, check your junk. So chefs, this is for your grown-ups, right? Give them a kick up the bottom and make sure that they check and they know what to do, because I know you know what to do, okay? Fat-free yogurt is fine, Emily. That is absolutely fine. Yes, a tablespoon. So a tablespoon, I don't use measures. So a tablespoon is exactly what it says on the tin, what I use at the table. And a teaspoon, wherever mine went over there, is exactly what we use when we make a cup of tea, okay? So don't worry, you don't need any fancy kit, all right? Hi, Nicole. You can have a shout. Absolutely. We've got another. Oh, I see you're saying hi to me. I thought you meant you were another Nicole. Hi, Camille. I'm Nicole. Right. Okay. So, Martin, we are making, um, oh, your name is Nicole. Right. 
I get confused because I know you're on Mummy and Daddy's um, Facebook login. Right, hi Martin, we are making um, cheese scones and Ellie, absolutely spread of butter is fine. From Sydney, I'm loving it. What time is it in Sydney? Goodness me. Right, so you can see it should be, it might have a few lumps, but you basically got a, a, um, a nice little liquid there that's all well mixed in, okay? Perfect. So, so far we've got 100 grams of our cheese grated, we've got our egg, our yogurt, our milk, and maybe some flavouring like mustard in there, okay? Pardon? Right. Okay. Okay. Hi, Hayden. Hi, Ria. You're making it with Marmite. I love it with Marmite. It's a really good thing. Marmite is so good for you. It's packed full of bee vitamins. It's really, really, really healthy. Hi, Pixie. And perfect. So everybody's good. I'm seeing lots of thumbs up. That's nice. So keep sending me the thumbs up and the love hearts, and then I know that we're all good and we're all ready to get into the next step. Okay. Perfect. Hi, Marianne. Hi, Raphael. So now we're going to do some weighing. So you want to take your scales. And if you've got electric scales like mine, I've just scribbled a bit of flour on mine. There's usually two buttons. There's a unit button and there's an on off button where it says tear. And that's where we reset it. So you want to press that on off button and you want to pop your bowl on. I'm just using a glass bowl so you can see what I'm doing. So you've got plain flour. Yeah, that's fine. Elizabeth and Francesca shout out. Yeah, I would, Maria, I would put the ingredients to one side. I just can't, I haven't got anywhere to stand it up. And if I put it here, I think it's going to get in the way of me cooking. That's the idea that you guys sign up to the mailing list and then you have all the recipes. So I know most of you have something like this to your side as I'm doing it. I'm going to go through it as I go. But thank you. If I can work it out, I will do. Um, right. Oh, that is lovely, Fiona. So you're coming to cook with me. Your cookery school is closed. That's good. Right. Hi, Ty. Perfect. Perfect, perfect. Right, so everybody should have a bowl on their scales and set it to zero. And we're going to weigh, remember, in G for grams. So what I want you to pour in is 250 grams of your self-raising flour. If you've got plain, don't worry, I'm coming to that in a minute. So just 250 grams of whatever flour you're using. So this is good maths homework, isn't it? Practicing for going back to school. So I've got a little bit too much, so just take a little bit out. Okay. So we've got 250 grams in there. Hi, Isla, it's your first time, that's lovely. Good, I love cooking with all of you guys too. And oh, Olivia, pesto spawns, they are gonna smell fantastic. I wanna see those afterwards. They're gonna be lovely and green when you start mixing it. It's gonna be really fun, okay? Perfect, so you've just signed, signed up, that's great. Maya, fantastic, don't worry, I'm gonna cover it all off today. And hi, Lily, fantastic. So I've got 250 grams of flour in here. Now. We're all going to use some baking powder. If you are using self um, plain flour instead of self-raising, you're going to need a bit more because that's the only difference. Self-raising flour's got baking powder already in it, but I want them to be nice and puffy. So everybody is going to have one spoon, and if you're using um, plain flour, maybe do one and a half. So just one little teaspoon, a level teaspoon there. So this is just teaspoon that I use in my cup of tea. So I'm just going to pop that in. And it's really fun when you pop it in because you think all these things are white. You think flour's white, baking powder's white. But look at the colour in there. I don't know if you'll be able to see it if I lift it up. But you'll see that actually a lot of things that you think are white are not as white as they are. So, hi, Sayon. I don't know if I pronounced that right. I hope so. Alvina and Elena. I got that. You love it. Good. And Belle. So, Right, who have I missed here? Rebecca, Ariane, Harry, and Kesha. Have you joined me from Milton Keynes in your own homes? Oh, that's so, I love it when you guys have had lots of friends from school, lots of cousins, lots of families. So you can have a little chit chat when you worked out who's there in the comments, okay? That's great. Um, spelt flour, I'm not sure it's going to behave the same way. You can certainly give it a go. If you've got white, I would suggest using white or maybe half, half white and spelt, okay? It's quite a distinctive flavour, um, and a lot of these flowers are same with gluten-free. They're not an exact substitute because they will change the texture. But you'll see when we get into making the, the dough, you'll be able to feel and adjust it, okay? Right, a teaspoon, absolutely, of baking powder, and a bit more if you've got plain. So, we're going to use our butter. Now, what we want is we want 50 grams of butter, but we want it in little cubes. So, what I do is I set my scales to zero, so that's the little on, off and tear button, so I don't have to do too much maths, although I think most of you would know what 250 grams plus another 50 is. Did I put bicarbonate of soda? I put baking powder in, but you can use bicarb if you want to, that's fine. So yes, baking powder and flour in here. So what I do, if I'm gonna do this in my hand up here so you can see, but you do it on the table. I'm gonna cut, this is just a table knife, don't need anything sharp, 
just going to cut a slice of butter like that. Can you see I've got a piece? And then I'm going to cut it in half. So I've got a nice little strip. And then I'm just going to cut it into my bowl in small cubes. Can you see if I show you the kind of size that I want? They're going to be easier to squish. So those of us that made crumble last week, this is what we're doing, crumbly fingers. So I'm just going to drop in those little cubes until I get to 50 grams of butter, okay? So it's usually a couple of sort of slices of butter. So cut a slice like that, then cut it in half so you've got a nice little piece that size, and then we're just going to cut it into small bits. Marmite isn't gluten-free. No, it's not. Um, you don't need Marmite. Um, mustard isn't always either, but if you, you don't need anything, so just leave it plain. Um, but if you, I'm saying some people want to add a bit more flavoring or some people don't want to put the cheese in, so then pesto, sun-dried tomatoes, something like that, there will be something that you've got in your fridge that's gluten-free. Okay, no problem. Um, does it have to be melted? No, not melted at all. It has to be cubed like this, ideally from the fridge, cold, okay? There were two sad faces. There were, I know, that probably means I'm going a little bit fast for everybody, but I just show you so you can get started and I'm going to go back with my comments, okay? So, yeah, no, don't melt it. Why are you guys melting it today? We want to cut the butter in, okay? It won't be a problem, don't worry, you'll work it out, but it's much easier to do it. So, those of you with long sleeves like me, you want to pull your sleeves up. So, all I've got in here is 50 grams of butter and 250 of flour with a little bit of baking powder, a teaspoon of baking powder, okay? And now we're going to do our crumbly fingers. So, those of you that did um, crumble with me last week know what to do. So, we're going to pop our fingers in and we're going to squish the butter just in our fingertips and let it rain down. So, can you see my fingers are dirty but not the middle of my hand so I don't want to squish it up I want to just squash and let it rain down until I get lots of lovely little crumbs so don't worry we're all going to do this together and um, you don't need to flour the surface with anything what will they look like Rachel I can't lift them up at the moment but this tray here that's what they look like okay so anybody that's melted their butter tell your grown-ups little people they weren't paying attention but um, just pour it in here and you'll just do the same thing, okay? It might be a bit harder. Just be careful your butter's not too hot though, okay? So, hi, Kathleen. Oh, it's lovely to see you. Fantastic. And shout out to Eden, absolutely. Shout out to Rachel. Oh, Martin, the best online cooking teacher ever. Thank you. I love that. That's so nice. Right, so this is lovely. This is nice squishing. So you can see that all my big lumps are getting smaller. And I should end up with something. What with you got Tesco own brand yeast, which is gluten free. Oh, that's really good to know, Abby. Top tip from Abby there. So that is good. Yeast extract. Sorry, I should say yeast extract. You can also use something I think called Engevita V12, which are the flakes, and I think that they might be gluten free. Don't quote me on that. Um, but that's a really good tip. I'm going too slow. I'm sorry, Alex. I know some of us are a bit faster than others. So don't worry. We'll just be patient. So we're just gonna. Squish this up. So give your, if, if you're going a bit too slow, do a double check here and make sure that everything is perfect. And if you've got some bits in the sink that are a bit messy, you can always wash up as you go. That's a good tip. So you've got a teddy called Deli. So I've got Deli and avocado. I want to see these. That's fantastic. So basically, now what you should have is a lovely bowl full of crumbs and no lumps. Okay. So if I bring mine up here and show you. Here we go. Can you see there? And if I put it in a glass bowl so you can see, so there's no lumps, can you see? And like I said, your fingers should just be your fingers that are dirty, not here, because I want to squish it in my hands. I just want to rub with my fingers. So if you've done that, for those of us that are super speedy chefs like Alex, what I want you to do is to take your cheese, I want you to leave a bit back for sprinkling on the top, okay? So put in most of the cheese like this, but leave a bit back. Okay, so I've left a little bit there because I like cheese on the top of mine. So I'm just going to give you a little picture of what it looks like, like that. And you can see that that goes nice and golden on the top. All right. Hi, Alvina. So and now I'm just going to mix the cheese in. So play hide and seek with your cheese. I'm just giving it a loose little shake like that. OK, so all of my dry ingredients are in my bowls, my cheese, my flour, my butter that we've rubbed in together, a bit of baking powder, and then all my wet things here and here. So how much butter? It was just 50 grams, okay? Just 50 grams of butter. I'm just going to push this out of the way. And don't worry if you're mucky, because we're still going to stay a bit mucky, so I'm not going to wash my hands now either. So, oh, I love you, Eden and Abba. That's perfect. 
Right, so everybody's good. So send me some little love hearts if you're good. And then we're, I'm going to show you what to do with the next bit, okay? Hi, George. Are your cheesy feet gone? That's best. I know. I've actually got a cheesy foot cutter that I use for biscuits to make cheesy feet. They're good. Or cheese. You can make cheese straws. I know we've had a request for cheese straws, so we might do that. They do look yummy. It's crumbly. Zoe, it's perfect. So when it's crumbly, pop in most of the cheese. Remember, leave some of it back for sprinkling on the top of your scones. And then you've just got all of your dry ingredients in one bowl, and you've got all of your wet stuff in another, okay? So then when that's good, what you're going to do, sometimes I make a little hole in the middle. It's called a well. So if I show you like that, if I tip it, you're going to, my well's going to disappear. But like a hole in the middle, okay? And then you're just going to pour in all of the wet stuff. Give it a good scrape out because if you've got yogurt in there, you can see like mine, it gets a bit stuck to the side and we don't want to waste anything. Let's give it a good scrape. So those of you, sorry, I should have said that we're doing herbs. You could put your herbs in. If you didn't put them in the dry stuff, you can put them in now, okay? And actually, that would be a good thing to do. So those of you that wanted to put some yeast extract in, but it wasn't um, gluten-free, you could put herbs and things in it as well if you wanted to. I agree with you. Mixed herbs, Mediterranean herbs would be good. It does. I love the mixing. It's so nice. Extra cheese, Tracy, I'm with you. Absolutely. And perfect. You're loving it. I've got Rachel there. And Storm, fantastic. Now, I'm just going to use my spoon because I don't like doing too much extra washing up and now all I'm going to do is I'm going to slowly mix it in if you've got a well you start mixing in the middle and you see it's starting to come together oopsie in the middle there and so we're just going to keep mixing until it comes together in a nice sticky ball and then we're going to get our hands in now I'm going to do this very fancy technique we did the other day called the mush and smush so with the back of your spoon you can just mush and smush it in together yeah, um, so the cheese goes in with the dry stuff. Where you've done your crumbly fingers and you've got your flour and butter and with a bit of baking powder, that's when you want to put the cheese in and then pour the liquid in. But you can do it all together. You know, all of my recipes are really flexible. So it's starting to come together, mine. Ah, uh, Ava Grace, you're loving it. That's fantastic. Hi, Nikki, lovely to see you. So it's kind of starting to come together, but no, ooh, not completely. I can't tip mine too much because I'm going to end up tipping it in my fruit bowl there. Right, so what you want to do is you want to get your hands in. So this is where pull your sleeves up. If you've got grown-ups with clean hands, get them to pull your sleeves up, okay? And then get stuck in, and you just want to squish it together until it starts to come into a ball. This is so satisfying. It's lovely. Hi, Bella. Sorry if I didn't give you a shout out before. Oh, good. Right, so we've got lots of lovely, oh, we've got some some thumbs up, perfect, and some hearts, so this is good. So those of you that were one step ahead, you can do this. And what I do is it's hard to get all of it together in the bowl. So when it's nearly there, what I'm going to do is tip it out onto my table. So a bit like the other day, we don't want to have too much washing up. So what I want to make sure is that we've tipped out all of the flour so I don't have such a lot of washing up to do later. So can you see how clean my bowl is? That way. And then what I'm gonna do with this big mess here, like we did when we made bread, is I'm kind of gonna knead it until it comes together, okay? Now, hi, I uh, said hello to the pig Spotty and Coco, and there's loads of flour left. You need to keep mixing it. Um, where have I missed the question? You couldn't get all the ingredients. There's loads of flour. So all you need to do like this, as I said to you, is just keep mixing it in. If it's really not mixing it in, it might be that you had like a, the egg is too small or you didn't have enough milk. So you can just put a bit more liquid. So I've got a tiny bit in here. So all you do is like that. Literally just, in fact, let me spread a little bit of this here. So if, if it's really not, can you see now how thick this is? Look, it's kind of made yogurt. Can you see there? So if it's really, really dry, just put a small bit of liquid like there. I'll just put it on top of my dough so I don't make so much mess. And then just squish it around and it will, I promise you, pick up all of that flour. So you just want to keep going until all of it comes together. I am going to say, should it be yellow? Yeah, it will be slightly yellow. It depends on if you've got really nice organic -y eggs. And don't worry, I'm not going to go too fast. I'm just going to show you what it needs to look like. And then you guys can do this. The live is going to be the page. Oh, yeah, don't worry if you're late. That's the whole point, Shamir. So you can come and join us live. This video is going to be uploaded really soon onto this page, so you'll be able to see it. There's a videos tab, so you can watch this one from today or any of the previous ones. And I also put them up on YouTube, so do not panic. You just need to sign up, get the recipes. I can follow this page because then you get little notifications when I go live, so hopefully you won't miss it next time. Right. You don't have, yeah, normal cheese. I just do mature cheddar because it gives a nice 
cheesy flavor, whatever cheese you've got. So can you see, I'm just working it slowly and it's coming together, it's coming together. You could use Parmesan, you could use Red Leicester, and you could use crumbly cheese as well. If you wanna do Stilton or something, that's also fine, okay? Can you make different shapes? They're better, they rise better if you're gonna make them in a circle, okay? So I would say for today, not. For cheese straws, yeah, absolutely. But give it a go and split the dough and see what you think. So can you see, just from a little bit of working, just my warm hands and stuff, I've got a dough. And you don't want to overwork it too much. So those of you that said it was quite floury, add a little bit of liquid if you need to, but just keep going until you get something like this, okay? So I'm going to wait a bit and see that you guys are all happy with this. And I'm not going to throw this away because I'm going to show you in a minute. I'm going to use this liquid to brush the top of my scone so we're being really frugal and not wasting anything. So you don't need to wash hands or do anything else at the moment. Perfect, so I'll have a little bit of tidy up, pop this away. It's amazing, isn't it? That's my milk is just semi-skimmed and look at that. Can you see how lumpy it is? You can see the side of my glass. If I tip this out, I'm gonna sit. You know how if I tipped a glass out of milk, it would be clean. Look at that there, can you see all of that bits? It's made curds and whey, like the little rhyme, the nursery rhyme. Are you finished, Camille? Perfect. So if you've got your dough, that's great. So give me some hearts and some thumbs up so I know if you've got your ball of dough like this. And I've got a little bit of stuff on my table, but you can see most things are there. Yours is very wet. So what you might want to do is just put a little bit, if you added some more liquid, you might have added too much. Just put a bit of flour down on your table. Just give it, you know, a little hand in the bag and a little shake, and then just roll it around in the flour. It will still bake, it's fine. It's not a problem, okay? Perfect, good. So what you want to do now is just give it a gentle pat out till it's a few centimeters and it needs to be even. So just watch me do it. So I'm just going to squish it down gently like that. Make sure it's even. Good sound, huh? Right. Perfect. Yours is it's not coming together. So you need to add a little bit more liquid and really squish it. You need to, guys to use your hands because the heat of your hands will really help as well. Okay. So, if I show that's about how big mine is, and if I bring it up here, you'll see it's even pretty much all the way around, just a few centimeters like that, okay? So that's what you need to do. So give it a good old smack down. Oh, thank you, Nicole. Nicole says you, Nicole's the best teacher. I love that. That's great. Right, okay, thumbs up and some hearts, good. Can I make a recipe done in the microwave? I don't really like to cook in the microwave. I want to teach you how to do proper things. So not everybody's got a microwave. In fact, I actually don't really. I only just got a microwave for heating up. Much better to learn to do it the proper way. You can bake some things, but you're not going to get them browned and stuff in the same way. So you don't get the same flavor. Hi, Kim. Lovely to see you. Hi, Shamira. You're welcome. So everybody got a little kind of pancake that looks like this. Now, what you want is you want your cutters. Now, usually, this is the kind of size that you normally have for scones, like sweet scones at tea time, but I think the little ones are quite cute. So make about 12 of these. If you do the bigger ones, it won't make so many. So whatever you want, okay? Perfect. So what I want you to do is, if you have a cutter like this, normally they've got a round side and then they've got a kind of fluted side. You can do whichever side you want. And what I want you to do is I want you to press it down. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to take out a board. I'm going to be able to do this up here so you can see. So we don't want to waste any of the dough. We can re-roll it, but it's better when we don't. So I'm going to start right at the corner and I'm just going to press down and then pull up. Now the idea is you don't really want to wiggle. Sometimes they come out perfectly like that. I'm just going to go right next door, push down, and I'm going to go all the way around till I get all my scones out. The idea is when you twist them, then they don't rise evenly. So it doesn't really matter, but that's the theory. How about if you don't have a cutter? If you don't have a cutter, just use the edge of a glass. You know that little glass I had? Or you could use like um, like here, for example, the lid on my baking powder tin. You could use that kind of thing. There's loads of things you'll have around the house that circle. And if you don't, when I get to the end, I'm going to show you what to do. So I'm just going to go around really quickly like this, just pressing down. If they don't come out, just leave them in and I'll show you what you want to do. Sometimes they come out like that and then you just use your finger. Can you see? Just push them out. I'm just going to go quick, don't worry, so I can show you what I mean. So always try and get as many out of the first bit of dough that you do. So I don't know how many I've got here, I have a count. Because then what you can do is you just peel away the dough like that, it's really easy, okay? So I've got quite a bit left, so I'm going to pop these ones that I've cut out, just spread them out a bit, so 
this is good for doing like we did the other day our times table so if you put them in nice rows then you'll be able to work out how many you've got i've got three by three three threes are nine so there we go i've got ten already um and then you just squish it back up do the same thing squish it down the same thickness so obviously your dough is getting smaller and smaller each time and then just cut a few more out however many you can do okay now i'm going to show you at the end what i do with my leftover dough and this will work for those of you that don't have any cutters or can't find anything so i use the wiggly side of the cutter because it gets that nice fluted edge you can't actually see it so well on there let me show you there you could see a little wiggly edge but it doesn't matter if you're cooking with little kiddies then you usually found the rise round side easier actually so what I would do with an end bit, I could actually probably get one more out of that, so we can do one more. Make a nice little row there. Okay. I like my trays to be nice and even. So what you do is you squish this. Do you need to grease the tray? No, you don't need to grease the tray at all. It's absolutely fine. You can put a bit of flour in it, but I wouldn't grease it. Okay. Um, so just make it into a ball like this. So you can just take a pinch, roll it. And then I just squish it gently on the table and then just use your hands round the side. And what I'm doing there, like give it a rub just until you get a kind of scone shape. OK, so they're not going to be as pretty as the other ones, but that's always what I did my last one. This, for example, was my last one. That was the end. But that's what I call chef's perp that you can have that. OK, so I'm actually going to put those two together because they were a bit small. So no reason to change just as it is. It's fine. So a little squish, little roll. And there they are. So I've got 13 and a bit. OK, so a couple of centimetres usually um, so that they rise. So you want them. So this is kind of how they go in. If I show you this and this, you can see that they rise really nicely. OK, um, so you don't want them too flat. If they're too flat, they'll be biscuits and they won't be so good. Um, if they're quite high, they'll just need a bit longer to bake. Okay? So I've got all of mine there. So hopefully you guys are nearly the same. Put that to one side. Perfect. And then I've got, you can take a separate egg and brush the tops. It's a bit wasteful, especially when eggs are really hard to get whole. You've just joined from Pakistan. I love that. Fantastic. Tell all your friends. We want more from Pakistan. We've had, now we've got Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Australia. It's like we're, most of us are in the UK. So I'm sure it's much nicer and warmer where you are. Right. So I've got a bit left over in here. So all I'm going to do is just add in maybe a splash of milk. So you can use milk, you can use yogurt, you can use whatever liquid you want. And it just is a bit like glue. If you've got extra eggs, so if you use an egg for something else, then use that. So I'm just using the inside brushing my bowl. Now, I've got a little pastry brush. If you haven't, just use your fingers. And all I'm going to do is gently brush the tops of each of my scones. Okay. And try and make it neat because you don't want to spill too much on the tray. If you spill a bit on the tray, it might stick a bit. It will come off, but it's good practice to be neat and do good painting. So if you didn't have a brush, all I would do literally is put your hands inside, just get some milk on your fingers and just give it a little kind of pat on the top. So they should look, if I show you this, they should look a bit shiny, really. Can you see that? I don't know if you can see that there, a little bit shiny. And that's just going to, you always look like wheels. That's fine. You're doing your style. Okay, that's fine. Sometimes, can you make cheesecake? Yeah, we probably will make cheesecake, another thing. And you've made eight of that. That's fine. You've just got a slightly bigger cutter. It's really not a problem. Or well, they might be higher. Just see what happens when they come out and you'll be able to try them again. I promise this is the recipe you're going to want to do again anyway. So this is all good practice. You don't understand the steps, Nicole. Which bit? So we've just cut them out. So if you cut them out and they're on a tray, all I've done is I've used some milk. I actually had a bit left over in my jug. Do you remember the little jug or bowl that you mixed up all your egg and milk in? And I just mixed that up and then I just brushed that on the top so that the tops of my scones are wet. And then I'm going to take that cheese that I saved and I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit on the top of each scone. OK, so and you'll want to squish them down. So I'm just putting a little bit on each one to start with so that I work out that I've shared them out evenly. OK, so, yeah. Right. OK, you made 24. That was a diddy one. They're bite sized. They're yummy. It really doesn't matter. You use whatever you've got. It doesn't matter what size. Okay. So I'm just sharing out all of my extra cheese. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to give them a little squish. Just can you see? I'm just putting my hand on top because I want to make sure that that cheese sticks to the top of that scone. Now, all of the cheesy bits that I've dribbled on my tray, I'm going to pick up because they will 
get nice and toasty, that'd be really nice, but I do really want them on my scones. So if you've had a little dribble, just pick those up, squish them back on the top, okay? In my house, actually, we fight over those bits on the tray because they get all nice and golden and gooey, and they're like crispy, crispy, cheesy bites. So <laughs> it should look kind of like that, okay? I've got a watermelon, hmm. Yeah, it's not watermelon season here yet, but we might have to do that. And I'm just gonna wash my hands while I come back and answer your questions. Hi, Sean, that's perfect, let me just do this. So you can just scatter your cheese on the top so that you are ready to go. Perfect. So they should all look like this, okay? So if I show you from the side, you'll kind of see how thick they are. And then they come out looking like this. Look how much higher they look, and they look amazing. And I promise your kitchen is going to smell fantastic, okay? So do you need to keep space in your... Yeah, great question. You do a bit. They won't spread too much, but it just stops them sticking together. And I really, I think it looks really nice in rows, and it's really good practice on your mats because you can work out how many you've done. So hi, PJ, cooking for Zoe. Oh, I like that in PJs. That's nice. So I've got them like this, and then you put them in the oven. Now, I've said about 10 to 12 minutes so you don't overcook them. So what you want, if I put this to one side, if they're smaller, they will take a bit less time. I actually put mine in this morning a little bit longer, more like 15, because I like them nice and golden on the top. So you want to check that when they come out that they'll be nice and golden, and then when you turn them upside down, they should be, can you see brown on the bottom? And if you give them that little tap, you should hear they're a bit hollow. So if they look a bit too white, they're not quite done enough. But it depends on when you're eating them. So sometimes cook them so that they're nice and lightly golden, maybe 12 minutes. And then if you're going to have them at lunchtime, take them out and then put them back in the oven for another few minutes just to warm them up again would be really nice. Okay. So am I going too slow? I'm sorry, Sarah. It's really hard. Normally I split my classes for preschool and for older ones. So I've kind of got everybody in together. And obviously I can't see you. So I'm going at a pace that I can answer everybody's questions. So pop them in the oven. You've done a brilliant job. You're going to love those. So for those of you that are new and those of you watching on replay and anybody old as well, you know what you have to do, which is share your photos with me. Pop them on. The, um, when I put this video up, there'll be a thread here. I'm going to add them to the album so I can give some feedback and give you some thumbs up, chefs, because I know you've done top cooking. Um, please, please share this with friends. Send the link out. Follow the page. Like the page. I'm going to pop these and you made a star. Yeah, I'd love to see all of your things. So whatever you want to eat them right now, I know, just bake them. But honestly, in like 15 minutes, you're going to have them and they are going to look like this. Your whole kitchen is going to smell amazing because if it's apart from those of us in Pakistan and Australia, it's a bit rainy where I am. It's not very nice. So this is going to make your morning. OK, so tomorrow, um, if you like and share and get to 9000, I've got an amazing um, little quiz for you guys. So check out the post on the page um, and then next week. You will see the recipes are coming out today. We are doing um, pineapple upside down cake this time next week. And on Wednesday, we're making stuffed jacket potatoes. So say hi to the person behind the camera from Albina. That's my husband, that's Ben. And he's doing an amazing job, isn't he? He's scrolling all your comments, so hopefully I don't miss them. So I will go back after the video, I go back, okay? But I know there's hundreds of you here and it literally is just me doing all your emails and everything else, so be patient with me. Um, oh, Rosa, do I have a pet? No, I don't have a pet. I don't have a pet. If I did, then they, the dog would probably come in and lick up all the crumbs on the floor, so that would be good, wouldn't it? In the oven, fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. So, oh, you love the cookies, Francis. That's great. Good, 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 good. And Ephraim, you are very welcome. Daisy and Emily, I'm so glad you enjoyed them. I will try and do a cheesecake, Melissa. Yes, I will try and do a no-bake cheesecake or something like that. We'll see. So I'm kind of conscious I've got to cook in a short time with you. So you've done brilliantly, brilliantly today. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed. Share with me your photos. Share with me your comments. And um, any questions, just give me a direct message. It's absolutely fine. Like I said, the replay goes up onto Facebook straight after also on YouTube, so subscribe there. If you've joined us at any point and you've not been to all the classes, all the other videos are there, so go back and enjoy those and let me know what you make. Have an amazing day, enjoy eating your cheese buns, and I'll see you guys really soon. Bye.